Alrighty. Thank you. So this, today's session is in reference to printers. As we should know by now, they are essential companion to many computers. Knowing how to install support will help the overall support to your actual clients that you're going to be working with day to day. And obviously this session is going to be helping us learn the different types and features to expect on all these different types of printers. We'll also learn how to install a printer and identify how to resolve common problems that may actually occur. Our main objectives by the end of the session is to hopefully learn how to compare and contrast the different types of printers, name the steps of installing them and identify the common pitfalls when you're doing this and identify the common problems that may come up with the actual printers themselves when they're being used and how to solve them. Printers come in four major types of categories. These categories are laser, inkjet, thermal, and impact. Those are the major categories. I understand, yes, there is laser 3D printers and other types of printers, but in this case, the ones that we will be troubleshooting and looking into are these. There's also what they call virtual printing, which is usually when you want to print something out, it'll allow you to put it into what the Windows call the XPS format or maybe a PDF format file of whatever it is that you want to print. We need to uh, understand how a, a, each printer works to be able to quickly diagnose and solve the problem, common problem issues quickly because if we don't know exactly how a laser printer does its job, then how do I know exactly which parts to repair? Because I understand, yes, we did say that there is going to be things that you shouldn't be touching. And one of the things we did mention is usually a printer, but there is normal wear and tear in these things. And you, as a technician, must know how to be able to identify that and then get the quitaipon. In Spanish, that means take off and put. It usually means that you're replacing a part because you're not going to go and take it in a part. And, and, and most of these things have either an easy access where you're snapping out the wheel, if it is actual wheel that you need to replace for the pickup rollers, or if, it easy, if it's the ribbon itself, uh, it, that's easy too. Whatever it is, you need to be able to identify and be able to give the routine maintenance on a printer. Obviously, there's those uh, multifunctional printers in these large corporations, Fortune 500s usually have already a service agreement with these large multifunction printers are the ones that we uh, stated that have the capabilities of fax, it'll be able to print, it's able to scan, it's able to do uh, multi-part, do even staple. Some of them, I believe, even punch holes. So when you're doing the little presentation thing, it could actually have holes. That's how sophisticated some of these printers are. So one of the key things that we're going to be talking about or need to learn is communication. And we need to be able to help us. How will good communication help to ease a client's anxiety when you're discussing printer issues? One of the main things that we need to be able to do is communicate clearly about the details of the printer itself. Make sure that, that you know, it's not over detail where it's too hectic that they're not going to understand it, but you need to be clear with the client itself and uh, try to be able to deal with the issue as quickly and as smoothly as possible. This obviously is going to help the client feel very confident if you're able to uh, uh, with ease diagnose. Obviously, as I stated before, most of these companies, if you are in a help desk or if there is a department or they might be other people that you can lean on when you first start. So don't be thinking that right away, just because you got your A plus, you're going to have to take the part of print. Oh, if you're in the correct place and you have the correct people around you, IT is a team. If you're in the wrong place and no one wants to help you and they're like in the old style jobs, we're, oh, I'm not going to teach you because, no, no, that's not our style. I think uh, yesterday, as Lazaro mentioned, that's not our style. You, may, you need to be able to mentor someone else, 
help someone else. One, it's going to help you too, because you're going to be able to obviously grow because it takes another part of your brain. And it's at the same time, to be able to develop this, you need your own personal responsibility. There is so many printers to the point that, like I said a moment ago, now there are even 3D printers out there. So given the diverse uh, uh, set of printers, we need to be able to address the needs of all these different types of complex technical printers and the answers that are expected without us being able to learn as much as we can about the different types of printers and their features it it makes it very hard so we need to be able to at least lean with our colleagues speak with them and if not obviously if we don't have anybody our friend google he never she never gets mad at us so i'm pretty sure she'll, she'll point us to youtube and we can find something there All right, as I mentioned a moment ago, the four main ones that we will be looking at is your impact printers. The name is exactly that, impact. Inkjet, which means that there's ink to be able to create it. Thermal printer, which means that, thermal. And lastly, your laser. Pretty cute. As I said, they really don't try to trick you when they try to name these things. Exactly how it does it is its name. So, Impact printers. Ayana, help me out with this one. Printer that creates an image on paper by physically striking the ink ribbon against the paper surface. Best known impact printer dot matrix printer. A print head moves across with the paper. Pins are used to print matrix of dots on the page. Pins shoot against the cloth ribbon. Ribbon impacts paper and deposits ink. They are slow and noisy. Dot matrix printer technology advantages. Continuous tractor feed allows event and data logging. Can use carbon paper. Print multiple copies used on a web. Extremely durable. Thank you. Definitely. These are one of the favorite ones for all these big companies, especially you're going to see this a lot in the shipping areas. These type of impact printers, especially the big humongous ones, are used because of the fact that one is continuous form, you could also set the form size. What do I mean by these? These things can actually have, I think it was some of them were three, what was it, three, four, four or five different reams of paper. So this makes it much easier when you're printing to the printer so they can actually get, let me see how I can explain this. The user no longer has to continuously change the form on the printer. It has various cart carriages to be able to then set the sizes to each form. So now if one paper is legal, the other one is A4, the other one's letter, there's no need. That gets configured on these sophisticated printers. On top of it, it has the continuous feed. It has multi-part forms. These multi-part forms, as you may, many have seen, usually when you sign a piece of paper, all of a sudden you see the guy, he takes it apart, he keeps one color, he, uh, and he gives you the other color. Most of these can go up to, I believe, up to five part or even more, depending what you ask the manufacturer, they can create the exact thing. As for the different type of impact printers, there is the daisy wheel printer one, and then there's the actual ones that hit with an impact. Those usually go right across the screen has a whole bunch of little things to make the dots. Those sometimes are, are used more because of the fact that you, instead of just having only characters as you have in a daisy wheel, which only has the characters, it's very mimicking to the fact as an old typewriter, if you ever saw the electronic typewriter, which is actually not the old typewriter, it was the new electronic typewriters, which has a little wheel, has every character, and it's able to move around, and it hits the ribbon, just like in a typewriter, and it hits the ribbon and puts in each character. In the other one, it is, as you can see in a moment, it will actually create the dots across the ribbon. The, the ribbon is so thick, so it has to keep on feeding the paper up to be able to create the characters and or uh, black and white images. Here goes a simple one. This is actually one of the ones that only has, I believe, one, two, three ways of being able to feed it. You have on the top itself where you're able to feed it through the top. It actually has through the bottom a way to be able to feed it up. And in the back, it also has the capability of being able to do it. On the front, you have the little configuration panel 
that these manufacturers allow you to be able to hit buttons, annoying buttons, that you set the size of the actual thing. After you read the manual and actually mess with it, you can actually, this is not part of the test. You just need to understand that it has it in there and how it uses it. It uses the wheel just like a typewriter to be able to move and guide the, the actual paper. But in this case, this is continuous. It, it has a ream, I believe, I don't know if it was 10,000 sheets or a thousand, I think it has to be 10,000 sheets, it can't be a thousand, a thousand is nothing nowadays. It's either a thousand or 10,000 sheets, I can't remember how long a ream of, of it. So you can see the user no longer has to continuously uh, actually feed it with paper and at the same time does not actually have to print multiple pieces of paper, it is itself have, contains already the copies. In the inkjet, as I mentioned right now, is the one that actually uses the print head itself. The cartridge contains the actual ink. This one's a little bit different than the impact, although it does use dots per se to be able to do it. In this case, it has a belt that goes across and it has a motor that actually helps it compared to the other one, which is an impact where it is gonna be impacting onto a ribbon this uses the ink this is very fam uh, familiar to you guys because if you do you, most people have an inkjet in their house it has that little cartridge where it actually fills uh, heats up the element inside which then actually melts it and now that it creates the actual image and or letters obviously on how sophisticated your your uh, printer is if depending on the dpis which is the dots per inch and I forgot what was the other one. Oh, there we go. It's PPM. Thank God I can actually open my eyes, uh, which is pages per minute. That is what it is rated on, depending on how, how good or how fast it is. That is what it's able to do. Dots per inch means that. How many little dots per inch it could actually do to be able to create it. So the higher, the, res, uh, the more dots, the higher resolution it can create for you. Any questions or doubts on an ink check? Here he is, a picture. So this is, like I said, usually you have it in your house. There goes the paper feed on the top. There goes the little ribbon. There. Anybody want to tell me what this control circuitry, what would that be mimicking in any computer device it is technically? Motherboard. Thank you. So the control circuitry where you connect your actually Centronics and or uh, printer port in the back comes in here which is able to control this machine obviously this machine or computer is job is to print you'll see the ribbon cable here which comes to the back of the actual carriage where everything is and this carriage then has the capability of being able to heat the element and melt whatever in there so that the ink can actually come out and split it out into here oh i actually finally figured out the image I said, oh, you, your class is fired, bro. I actually figured it out. This is a horse. Remember I asked you, you guys, nobody could tell me what this image was. This is a horse. It's a pink horse upside down. What are you talking <laughs> about? I asked you guys last time. Nobody could tell me. I, everybody thought it was some watermark or something else. That's a horse. You're it fired. Is, it's <laughs> it is a horse. Maybe Put your head upside down. Thing. You'll see it's a horse. <laughs> in my defense, I thought it was a pink horse. In your defense. Oh, no. What do you think, Marvin? In his defense? I can't buy that, man. It's, it, it's uh, a pink yeah. horse. <laughs> yeah, it's upside down. Horse. I just finally figured it out after three or four classes. It's a pink horse. All right, all kidding aside. So now here's a little paper uh, feeder here. And why am I mentioning these things and why are they annoying you with these things? Because these are the things that we need to replace not the circuit board obviously we're not playing around with that but right here this paper advanced rollers we need to know where they are those are a little snappity snap you take it out you and and it shows you how to take it out it's very easy it has a release thing comes out you put in new rollers why would i need to replace the rollers the paper advanced somewhere. rollers that is correct. There are those little rubber things. You'll notice that you're like, dude, but it's not worn out. You guys ever seen your tires when you first get it? By the way, you're going to get scared of that. A lot of people, when they buy the rollers, they're like, oh, my God, they're a piece of junk. It's just like your tires. You'll see that it, I mean, it doesn't have great threads. 
but it looks like if it's cracked or something's wrong with it. Don't worry about it. It's supposed to be like that. When you see it as like if it was a race car slick, that's what it is. It's worn out, so it's slick, and the paper starts slipping. Ta-da! Now you know something that... Don't forget uh, your paper dust. Yeah. Another one that's very famous in here, by the way, is a paperclip. I know, a paperclip. Don't ask me. It's not a copier. I don't know. It's a paperclip. If you tell me if it was a stapler, I still don't understand it. What's a paper? Anyway, but just to let you know, be very careful. Somehow these users tend to throw things in, in here that are very odd. You'll Next one over here that you will be changing is the actual step motor. That one, that again snaps out easy. Once again, a lot of times you're not going to be touching this, but you know, these are the parts that you will be touching. Questions, doubts? All right. Next one is your thermal printer. This one is a little bit different. This is used a lot when it comes to, again, the shipping department, I would say. You'll see it a lot in your boxes. You see the little white label that's outside, or it could be any color label you want. There is two of them. There's a direct transfer, which, uh, the, the sorry, direct thermal, which means that it actually burns the dots onto this special coated paper. The paper, be very uh, warning that if it gets old one, if it is old, that little special coating, since it is in a warehouse, it is going to get old, and then it's going to look like the machine is not working. It's not the machine. What does the machine do? It burns dots. So therefore, if it is, if it, is it will be a permanent thing. You'll see maybe that there's a, a line continuously coming down that's burning weird or something like that. That, now you know that is the machine that's giving you the problem. But if it's not printing at all, check. One, either the labels are old, or two, it could be that they got confused with labels and they and they put the labels that were supposed to be on a thermal transfer printer. This is still a thermal printer. The only variance is that this one uses a ribbon. It has a actual ribbon that comes. Uh, let me see. I can, you guys uh, know the projectors from way back when uh, school projectors when when you they would put like a little reel. Or even in movies now, right? They put like a little movie reel, and then there's a second wheel. That's what it looks like. It's a big, humongous thing that has two wheels. One wheel is for all the white labels, which continuously go through. And the other one is for the actually black film. And those two together get, again, heated up. And that element goes through that area, and it thermally transfers the image. Only the image ink stays in place. The, then the ribbon continues on that way. You probably saw that also that type of idea again in maybe those receipts where they used to put like a little black thing there and then they would write on the original paper and then the second paper has a carbon transfer. Same idea in this case, though it is one is a label sheet where it's white and the other one is the actual uh, the thermal ribbon where you, you heat it up and transfer the ink onto the white paper. The sticker part is on this side. Any questions, doubts? Hello. Hello. No. All right. Laser. Now, this sucker, a lot of people should know this one. This one's also very famous. This is the one that actually produces high quality. That's one of the things that a lot of people like. It also prints much faster than the other ones. At the same time, this is used more into the office area, not in the warehouse area per se. Uh, obviously, there may be some in the warehouse area, but I'm just saying its main use would be obviously for that. There is the ones that are, are for color. There is ones that are just black. As for the, the actual color ones, those are the ones that use the various colors cartridges. Again, just like in the other one in, in the actual inkjet, some sophisticated inkjets require uh, actual four cartridges, which is your actual black, your cayenne, your magenta, and your yellow. But the, And then there's the ones that actually have the three colors together, which is the cayenne, magenta, and yellow, and then a second cartridge for the black. In this case, 
a lot of the sophisticated color printers have cartridges for specifically each one because the toner is is in that color in there the whole color in the toner if you know toner cartridges if you ever played with one in which you shouldn't be you'll get that toner in your hand the same thing you shouldn't be doing is exposing the toner cartridge the green thing that's there you're going to see with a roller when you're going to ever install make sure the direct light for a prolonged time does not hit that photosensitive drum because of that photosensitive drum is the one that creates the image if you uh permanently have a light for a long time there it will damage that photosensitive drum therefore it wouldn't be able to create the image in that spot hence if it ever gets worn out and you see that there is some problems those most likely because of the actual drum itself you have your paper transport that's basically just like in the other one where it transports the actual information sorry transfers the paper in your logical circuits, which is obviously the it, it, it itself, as we said before, any circuits and or circuitry that's coming in is the one that controls the actual. Did you have your toner and toner cartridges, your photosensitive drum, your laser beam, which is actually the one that actually creates the image on there, your corona, which is where uh, the primary corona and your transfer corona to be able to transfer the image. You have your fuser rollers, which is actually the one that actually, uh, I would say, blanchard irons on or, or stamps on or heats on and permanently the actual image. You have your power supply and lastly, your drivers and or, oops, support. As for the processes, this, my friends, is one of the things that you need to understand with a, with a printer. The, the laser printer has these steps. And why do you need to know? Because based on where the issue lies is where you could actually tell from these. The first thing it is, is that it processes the images. So who could tell me would be a pro problem is if, if it's unable to process the image. Who will be processing information in any computer? The processor. Or the drivers. So therefore, the processor, right, of itself, when you request and sends it, it's going to have its little circuitry in there, right? So some of these have its own print server inside. So you need to understand, some of them could actually control the print. And a matter of fact, even if you have your own say print server so you can control all the drivers and all that stuff on that print server when you process and you send it to it it itself still has its own software which it has to be able to actually spool and have a whole job of everything that's in there the print multiple print jobs so if if it's unable to do this then we know that it is is it is this board the second part of this so the first part is i'm going to process the image that's what the laser is doing, the laser printer. The second one is you're actually charging the drum itself, and key words here, because it does it two different ways. It charges it with 600 to 1,000 volts. One of these times that you'll see is that your users tend to actually put these printers on what they're not supposed to. What do I mean? They'll sometimes print this, put this on an actual uh power strip right or a ups where it has too many things one you're not supposed to put on a ups two a power strip that has too many of things on there you're not supposed to really be putting that because of the fact as we see here it's gonna now itself when it starts pu pulling how many volts come into your house how many volts somebody Help me out. 600 to 1,000? No, in your house. Your house. That would be pretty amazing. Your oh. house. What's, what's on the wall? In the United States, what's in the wall? What do we learn? 110. 112. 110, 112, somewhere around there, right? So now, to create negative 600 to negative 1,000, that is a unit that's in there that's able to do that, right? That is the conditioning or the charging drum itself where, where it's going to uh, create that. 
So you could just imagine it's going to be pulling volts and it's going to be what? Amps. To be able to get this, I got to get myself on that hose. Instead of having that little hose, I got to have that big fire hole or, or, or I say firehouse hose, right? So I could be able to pull hard now and get the, the actual energy to create 600 to 1,000 volts. So we need to be very careful. So sometimes people go and replace printers when in case it is the user that's creating this problem. It's most likely in this case when this happens, when it's creating this and it's pulling hard, it itself, either the unit, that part is failing and or the, the actual UPS actually screams and said, beep, you son of a beep, don't do it, you beep. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> I kind of find it cute, but that's what it warns you. You're pulling too much. There's no way this UPS, uninterrupted power supply, is able to cope with the amount of watts, volts times amps. Hence why we need to learn watts. Since your printer is actually grabbing so much watts and you decided to put it onto this power strip and or UPS, you've created your own issue. If not, if it is correctly, then it could be a problem with there. The next part is the actual exposure. The laser itself creates a positive image on the surface of the drum. First, I just told you, I went and hit the drum with negative 600 to 1000. Feel me out. You guys ever see uh, or play with a magnet and then you put that little magnet dust or something and then you go and you start playing with the magnet on top of that little dust? So then you can see the shield or the magnetic field of, of it. No? Nobody was bored? Nobody had this little toy when you were a little Like kid? the etching sketch thing? Well, you, you could think of it as an etching sketch thing, but an etching sketch is similar. But, but have you ever seen where, where if you, if it has little, uh, uh, let's say, positive and negative charge particles in it, right? But then they give you a little magnet which has a, a positive, sorry, a, 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 a north yeah. and a south pole magnet and when you go over it it starts moving the little uh, uh magnetic uh pieces of, of stuff because one the uh, is uh north and one south so when you put the actual side it'll either push it away or it would actually but it was similar to etch a sketch you got the same idea but this was little just charge uh i would i believe it was i don't know if it was if it was north or south whatever it was either negative or positive charge this is what they're doing they're actually going and hitting it with with negative 600. So when you hit it with a positive one, uh, so, sorry, positive amount, it's now creating a a, a, pol a a difference of polarity. So when they go now and throw the dust, which is the toner, it will there stick to that area and create the image. I got a picture of it, by the way, Diego. If, if okay. Can show so it when you're there. developing those particles, the lesser negative charge will attract the actual toner particles to create right. the image. Lastly, the tr the actual trans. Oh, sorry, the next one is the transferring. I think it has pictures on there. If not, we can put. A I think that there's also a video. Next is the actual transferring of the corona, where it gives the paper now a full positive charge. The paper. And now the negative charge particles, remember there? Like I said, opposites attract. So that just like they did with that magnet. Now, with the positive charge paper, the negative charge particles that are in there, the, the toner, will leap out and stick like if it was a magnet onto this paper. Bing, a magic show. Next, now that you have this, it has successfully landed onto this paper fine and dandy but if you have problem with the next one so now we know what the transfer corona does it's able to transfer so if, if, if i can't get those the 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 developing which is the one that develops the image right and now if i can't get those particles onto that paper that is the transfer one right the one if i could look at that green drum and look, if I could see that it looks like a little etch -a sketch as someone just mentioned a moment ago. So I could see if I roll it, that it actually was printing what it's supposedly printing, but there's toner in here. 
as part of developing. Now that I transferred the ink, the ink landed by magic here. If there's a problem with the next step, which is the fusing, there's two ro rollers there that now act like a hot iron. Fair warning, the fusing is super hot. Do not put your fingers in there. Wait until it gets cold. You will be replacing that, by the way. That is, again, unki daipong. You go and release it and put the new entire fuser assembly in. These things actually uh, finish pushing it on, melting it on, and permanently affixing it on. Lastly is the cleaning. So inside the drum is where it has a blade that is able to clean the drum and the charge so it erases it from the actual drum. So now I don't have a ghost image of the last page that I printed there. Just like we said earlier in the actual impact printers, actually I didn't mention that, you have the ribbon. So, so just gotta understand this ribbon is gonna keep on going across. It will start getting worn out or it will finish just like in a tape lead. But just like in a typewriter, it starts going backwards and feeding the, the actual ribbon. So the user doesn't ever get a warning that it's running out of ink. The actual ribbon just keeps on going, keeps on going back and forth. In this case, if there is any problem with the other part, some of these actual laser printers will tell you exactly which part it is that's going bad. But unfortunately for you, you need to know that if it is not sticking onto the paper, that means that the fuser assembly is broken. If it's not able to clean the drum of the image that's there, that's the cleaner, there's something wrong with it. One of the beautiful thing of the uh, cheaper one, the cheaper uh, models, the ones that usually are on the actual user's desk, is that the actual toner actually comes with uh, the actual cleaning, the, the drum, it comes with everything together. Where the more sophisticated one has actual little buckets for the for for the toner has an actual uh, separate actual drum and those parts are all separate on those big humongous ones guess what since they are so big usually since they're so big they're either renting or they have some type of service where those specialized people come in you're not supposed to go in and start replacing parts the regular laser ones those you will be touching, which then it's all in one. So do you have the part that's in the middle that has the drum and all that stuff. And then the second part that you will be, which is in the back, is the actual fuser assembly and or the actual pickup rollers themselves. Virtual printers, if there's no questions about laser printers. I got some questions here from Arturo about what is giving the negative charge for the toner and then what's giving the charge for the paper? So I believe he's talking about step two and step five. There is a, a uh, power converter, right? That's what it is. There is a, a part of the laser printer itself. It has the power supply itself inside and or I don't see an inverter, but either which way it is it has the capability of creating this power. Now, depending on what, where it's getting used itself, as for the uh, drum, the unit actually uses it and puts it on the surface of the drum itself. So all coming through the motherboard and or the thing. So it, it then on the next one, as for the laser, that one is the one with a laser that's separate, but as for the negative charge, that again is on the actual printer. Do we have that video available, the one that you're saying? I think it, if I remember, it was from these people, which does do a very good, decent job on that. I can look it up during a um, okay, break. Perfect, during a little yeah, break. Get that ready. Okay. Uh, Talking about sorry. breaks. Uh, mm -hmm. I so to that uh, the coronet gives the charge to the paper and the drum, don't they? The, the primary and transfer corona. Corona, yeah, the transfer corona, correct. Right. The transfer correct. Uh, that's the one that does the positive charge, and the, and the negative charge particles leap. That's the transfer corona to the okay. actual paper. That's a transfer. 
and mm -hmm. the main one, uh, I mean, the primary one gives the charge to the drum, doesn't it? I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. So the primary corona is the one that gives the charge to the toner? To the drum. Uh -huh. To the drum. And, to, uh -huh. and, the, and the toner comes in through the drum? It goes the toner here and goes the, the okay. drum. Some of them uh, are all inclusive, one big thing together like that, or one big drum. I don't know if you've ever seen it, one big cartridge per se. That's what it's called. I don't remember the name. Oh, okay. I see. If you think about it, Arturo, the paper's in the middle, right? You got negative and you got positive, and it's almost smashing it together. So, and it's it's trying to compete with the positive and negative charges. So, we have a video once we come back from um, from lunch that will probably be a lot better visually to see it. Yeah. See, it has this here basically has it all inside of it. All the pieces are inside. When you take this, well, of course I can't even zoom into this. Why, why would I be able to zoom into something that would be too easy, right? See, there goes the ones that have the various colors. That's a sophisticated one. But this one here, see, it has all the pieces inside. All those pieces that they're showing you over here, it's all inclusive inside here. So you won't have to, sometimes you don't even have to re replace the whole thing. Some of them have the capability of that. Maybe just the actual toner part comes out and you could actually put that in, on the back so that you could, it could actually be cheaper. But that is all depending on the model and how you buy it. So when we come back, we'll have that image. Let you guys go to lunch. I'll see you guys here at 310. There are six distinct processes involved in producing a laser printed page, all of which occur within the cartridge. Lexmark Laser Technology uses an electrophotographic process to transfer digital data to paper. 
The process begins with the charge roller, which applies a uniform charge to the surface of the photoconductor drum. Photoconductor drums are highly sophisticated components, precisely formulated to the power and wavelength of the laser print engine for which they are designed. The laser strikes the photoconductor drum up to 65 million times a second, creating a chemical reaction that discharges the areas that are negatively charged resulting in an electrostatic image. Next, the image is developed. The toner adder roll coats the developer roll with toner while electrostatically charging the particles. As the toner is placed on the developer roll, a leveling device called a doctor blade evens the toner to a thickness of approximately 15 microns, just slightly thicker than a strand of silk. As the developer roll and photoconductor drum come into contact, the negatively charged toner is attracted to the discharged areas of the drum. When the paper passes under the drum, the transfer roller applies a slight electrical charge, causing the toner to move from the drum to the paper. The drum rotates up to two revolutions per second, timed with the exact speed of the paper, ensuring a complete image transfer. Next, the image is made permanent through a combination of precisely controlled heat and pressure. As the paper approaches, the fuser rollers heat up to 225 degrees Celsius. In just 23 thousandths of a second, the powdered toner reaches its melting point and bonds onto the page. The melting point of Lexmark toners are specifically formulated for our printer's fuser temperatures, ensuring satisfactory prints and protecting the life of the fuser. The final step in the imaging process readies the cartridge to print a new page. The cleaning blade gently removes any stray particles of toner, and the drum is ready to be written anew. During the life of an average Lexmark... Our new house is amazing. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. In this video, we're going to talk about different types of printers. Now, printers allow the ability to print copies of documents or photos onto paper from a computer. Now, there are several different types of printers, but the most common types that are used in homes and businesses are inkjets and laser printers. And there are also a couple of less common printers, such as thermal printers and dot matrix printers, which we'll talk about later. So let's first talk about inkjet printers. Now, inkjet printers are the most common printers that are used in homes. They are affordable and they produce photo quality results. And they are enough to suit the needs of a typical home user. Now, an inkjet printer works by the print head moving back and forth across the paper during printing. And during this process, the print head places ink on the paper in very tiny dots. In fact, these dots are so tiny that they are smaller in diameter than a human hair. And as these dots are precisely placed, they form to create an image on paper. Now to explain how the ink is placed on paper, here we have an example of an ink cartridge with a built-in print head. So inside we have the ink, a heating element, and a nozzle. So what happens is that the heating element receives a charge of electricity and it heats up then as it heats up, it forms a bubble in the ink. Then as the bubble expands, it squeezes out drops of ink on the printhead nozzle and onto the paper. Then the cycle is repeated until the print job is done. Now this particular type of inkjet technology is called thermal bubble, which is used in HP and Canon printers. Inkjet printers use liquid ink in cartridges. Now typically lower end inkjet printers come with two cartridges, one for black and the other one for color. But higher end inkjets come with four ink cartridges, such as one for black, cyan, magenta, and a yellow. So now we're going to talk about laser printers. Now laser printers come in different sizes, from smaller personal ones to larger ones for businesses. Laser printers provide the highest quality print 
when printing text and simple graphics, and they are also more expensive than inkjet printers. Now a laser printer basically works by first placing an electric charge on a rotating drum. Then a laser discharges a lower electrical charge on the drum. So basically the laser draws the image that is going to be printed on the drum itself. Then the drum is coated with a fine black powder known as toner. And as the drum is being coated, the toner only clings to the areas where the laser has drawn. Then as the paper goes through the printer, the toner is placed on the paper. And the result is a high quality print that is second to none. And another type of printer is called a thermal printer. Now thermal printers print by using heat. Thermal printers use special print paper called thermal paper. And on this thermal paper is wax-based ink. And when heat is applied to this ink, it turns black. So in a thermal printer, the only thing the printhead does is apply heat to the areas where ink should be printed. Then when the ink is cooled, it becomes permanent. And because of this technology, thermal printers are very quiet. Thermal printers are commonly used for printing labels and barcodes. And lastly, there's dot matrix printers. Now dot matrix printers are almost non-existent today. They are an old technology that produced mediocre print quality especially when compared to laser or inkjet printers. And they are also very noisy. Now dot matrix printers are impact printers. The printhead in a dot matrix printer moves across the paper and as it moves, the pins on the printhead strike against a cloth ink ribbon which then comes in direct contact with the paper producing each character in the form of dots. But despite being an outdated technology, dot matrix printers can print multi-copy documents such as carbon copies. They are also very durable and they last a long time. Printers, in essence, are either a file that you can create a PDF, an XPS, or an image file. Sometimes you can be actually uh, printed to a specific file for that program, and or you can do it into a document or something like that, depending what it is that you're trying to print. It obviously is not going to print out on an actual printer. It's just going to actually just create the image itself. Okay. Questions, doubts? Yeah, I had a, yeah, a, a question, question like, what, mm -hmm. what would be the difference? Because difference... it sounds like similar to like uh, exporting a file, like saying like, oh, I'm going to make this into a PDF or whatever. Like it sounds similar, like what would be the difference between print to file and exporting? Good question. Let me see. Uh, depending on the, let's, let's, let's say uh, you have, uh, instead of being a web browser, you have a program that you're dealing with that is proprietary to this company. When you go and you hit print, it's going to ask you, what printer would you like? When you do that, Windows has the feature of you having the, the thing what they call uh, print to file. So now, instead of actually printing it out, to an actual physical printer, you're going to actually save it to one of those options that has to be inside the actual uh, options of you to be able to print. Let me see if I hit print here, for instance. See, save to PDF. I can print to my printer. I can save to Google Drive. There's other options there that I can see. That's the difference between. But in, in the case of what you're saying, why, why not just always do it that way? The thing is that, like I just stated, if the program itself doesn't have that, you could actually mimic so that since it is a very old 
a program, you could actually mimic that your print the file is local port one. Why? Because since this thing is automatically always going to print to that port, you can make it so that it thinks that that port is actually always print the file, print the XPS. Then the little thing comes up, you save it to the server, and boom, you just printed the digital copy that you had to. Any other questions okay. or doubts? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Right. Now, your languages of the actual printers. You have, uh, let's see here. Actually, I do help me out. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, printing language communication methods between OS and printers. Printers may use A, S, C, I, I, for example, for, for simple text. Some printers use PostScript developed by Adobe. Images processing is done by the printer and not the PC CPU. Others use PCL, printer control language commands, developed by HP. It doesn't support advanced graphical functions. Windows uses the GDP, which is graphic device interface, to handle print functions. Then it sends, then it, then sends it to the printer. Windows Seven slash Vista uses XML paper specifications or XPS, which has some improvements over GDI, like color enhancement. The printer's mm -hmm. properties box is adjust page orientation, resolution, correlation paper sizes, types, and sources, manage duplex printing, and print a test page. Thank you. Give me a second here, obviously. You should see, hopefully, this here, the control panel. Jeez, even with the big icons, Diego, you can't read it. Where's printers? Here, man. It's all the way up here, device and printer. Where you go? There we are. Well, here's the actual, you could say, printer spool where all the jobs actually come into to this printer you can come with ease to be able to see and troubleshoot any given printer inside windows and you'll be able to also update the drivers cancel any documents that are here you could actually go into the properties of the actual printer you could print test page go into actual uh, settings if you want to share it so that it can actually be uh, uh, available to other users on the network. And here goes the part where I was saying that you could actually have it mimic where it believes that it's going and printing out to lo local port one. Therefore, whenever someone or the program is, is asking, it will attempt to print it there. Ah, of course, hit cancel, maybe that'll stop it. You could also add their ports yourself that are specific to the IP, so if you know the specific IP that you want to go in and create a specific port to, you can actually do that yourself. With these, just go ahead and hit the button to add. And obviously, no, this thing wants to freeze. Let me turn on this thing. Where do you go? All right, and there goes the standard TCP IP port. And I can actually specify whatever IP that pertains to that printer. In there, oops. I just close it is where you could actually go and adjust the actual paper size, the orientation, the correlation. Does anyone know what correlation is? Page order page order print. Print. Correct. I always forget which is this. Never get there. There we are. So You can actually change front to back, back to front, both sides, orientation, 
you can actually set the quality here and as for the, the i guess this one doesn't go, do correlation as for correlation what it means is is it actually can if you want to print 10 copies you can choose that it prints the first page 10 times and then the second page 10 times or you could actually have it correlated where it's in these laser printers that are out there very sophisticated where they give you the features and it will actually put it in order for you in other words it will go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then repeat that exact same process 10 times on top of that it will do that you could also click another fancy button that says to staple it it will actually staple everything and on top of that it can actually some of them which i find very cute if you want it for presentations you could choose if you want the whole punch for three or two yes but those cost a lot of money any questions or doubts mike x six pages six per, minute, per minute being normal it varies per um printer and I guarantee you, I guarantee you six is kind of low. Six is kind of low. For a laser, yeah, that's very slow. But that would be a, a more cheaper model laser printer, maybe. And now, once again, you got to look at the PPMs. You have to look, is it in reference to, sorry, excuse me, color or black only? Because if it is black only, it will be much faster than the color. You could always check different manufacturers and check the latest ones that are out there to see what's the latest and greatest of uh, uh, the cheaper models. Obviously, there's higher end models that will spit out things that will get you a paper cut if you play with them. <laughs> Questions, doubts? All right, I pass it off to my friends for installations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, so connecting, installing, installing, installing basic, basic. basic. I'm getting some sort of like some some feedback, feedback here. Feedback Hold, here. On Hold on a sec. All right. All right. Any better? Any better? All right. Still got that. Still got that. Double talk. Double talk. Oh, I have it too. I have it too. I'm getting no feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're not everybody else, everybody else, else is as well. As well. Is someone who's not muted, uh, who has their volume muted. Yeah, well, I can hear all the feedback. All that. <sighs> Test. All right, Test. let's mute everybody and then try again. Testing, testing. Not Better now. It's working this time. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right. So back to what we were saying. Um, connecting, installing basics for printers. Um, printers are connected to your local computer or workstation. You can do it either by USB, Wi-Fi, serial ports. There's multiple different ways you can actually connect these things. Um, connecting printers through Wi-Fi, you can also do that through the Ethernet. Simple plugging the cable into the back of it and into your computer. Wi-Fi is just setting both your computer and the printer on the same Wi-Fi. Um, most printers are just very simple. It's just plug, plug and play and downloading the right drivers to communicate with your actual computer. And then that's pretty much it. It's just super simple. There's not too much to do other than just downloading. Next slide. All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, the basic local steps, again, it's plugging the printer into the connector into the right port. Um, turning on the printer because that's always important to have the um, printer on otherwise it's not going to work installing any drivers that are given from the manufacturer sometimes you will have to go to their website to 
look it up properly and get the right ones or maybe get the updated ones. Um, and then if you're using Windows, just follow the installation wizard. And most of the time, you just have to hit next all the time. And then you will have to find your printer during that process. Sometimes that can be a little difficult if it's not already set up onto the Wi-Fi. So you always want to make sure you set up your printer and connect it to the Wi-Fi first before you try to connect it to your computer. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to find it. And after that, it's just simply print a test page and you should be good. Um, for printer servers, who would like to read out for me? I'll read it. Oh, uh, oh. Go ahead. I got it. Thank you. Print servers. Hardware or software that manages print jobs sent to one more printers on a network can be a dedicated hardware device with software installed on a computer on the network, programs embedded in firmware on a printer, embedded firmware print server can be used to manage print jobs, view printer status, see job history, and check counters. Utilities can be accessed through a browser Windows print management monitors and manages printer queues for all printers on a network. In print management, each computer on the network that shares a printer is considered a print server. Thank you, Sheila. Um, so basically, a print server is just as it sounds. It's a massive, like, uh, what's the best way with this? You just have access to it throughout all your throughout the company. You can have more than one computer printing to it at a time. It will manage itself with the printing queue, and then you'll be able to access it as you need. And to install a shared printer, um, Michael, can you help us out here? Steps two, share installed printer. Windows seven, make sure turn on file and printer sharing is selected. Windows 8.1, printer sharing must be turned on. Basic steps for Windows seven, eight, 10. Open properties dialog box, select sharing. Select share this printer, enter name for the printer, make sure driver is available. Thank you, Michael. And it is exactly as easy as it sounds. The only hard part might be actually navigating through the um, selection windows and stuff because windows is a little difficult like that sometimes. But once you know where you're going and know what section to actually get to your printer sharing, it's just that simple to set up. I'll read this time. All right. All right. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Steps to install a shared printer. There are two ways to install a shared printer. One, use Windows Explorer and then Network or Network Places window. Two, use Control Panel Devices and Printers window in Windows 7. In Windows 8, use Control Panel uh, Hardware and Sound. Click Advanced Printer Setup, then on this new screen, select the third radio button for add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name. Thank you, Josh. Um, again, pretty much as it says there, it's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is just navigating the Windows Explorer. That might be a little difficult finding the right sections, but it's all laid out right there. Any questions or concerns that you guys have about this? I'll take the silence as a no. No. All right.
Justin, is this where I believe uh, I hand it? I was about to say that. Yeah, I think, this is uh, where I hand it off. It's coming back to you, Diego, because of Kelly. 10 4, thank you. All right, so uh, managing uh, the actual printing queue here in reference to this, obviously, uh, is where we were going earlier. You could be basically be able to not only set it as your default printer, so it all obviously always prints through there uh, first, so without having to actually print, if you go and hit print screen, for instance, on your on your windows key it will actually print directly there you're going to have options in most of the windows 7. i believe they took some of those options off on the windows 10 then it it uh, doesn't print directly you have to actually say which way you want to do it as for the options for being able to control the actual printer spool, the spool itself you'll see here for instance that it's paused so you could actually go and cancel all the documents <clears throat> You can actually go and start it and choose whatever you like there. You can actually put it to use offline or you could uh, uh, actually set the sharing option so other people can actually use this computer as the print server. So it would actually print through here to that actual printer. So let's see. Of course, this doesn't want to come out. All right. Here's your sharing. You'll be able to go and hit that. And I'm going to say DC printer. Aplicate. Now it's going to go and apply. And hit OK. Now, as they stated a minute ago, if I come here, supposedly, if I did that right, and if it feels like doing it, I can come in here and where it says network and obviously prove me wrong. It should come out here as a printer. Anytime now. What was the name? I, anyway, I remember the name I put for it. Diego printer, right? Uh, we'll find out. We'll go back, go back, go back to where we were. Should have just left that window open. Properties. Oops. I always hit that one because they moved it. It used to be that spot right there. Anyway, go back over here. DC printer. So we're supposed to be able to see that on the network itself. So if I pipe to it, I'm supposed to be able to find the printer. Yeah, that or it just wants to be a pain in the butt. Doesn't want to play nice to me. Share, yeah. Nothing else to change. God only knows. Maybe because uh, I'll check in a little while. Maybe if I turn on my my, my virtual machine. Maybe because I'm already installing it. Not let me install it first. I don't know. It's the only thing I can think of. But I'm supposed to be able to see it on the network. We'll get back to that. Going back to life. Back to reality. Here we are. So from this, back over here anyways, we should be able to, with ease, there's a print job. Anybody see that here? Maybe just as simple as open. Is it not see what's printing? That's what I thought it was. What's printing? There he is. I hit the wrong button, man. I'm getting blind at my age, man. <laughs> I, I refuse to get myself bifocals. But I think I'm going to have to start getting those things. All right, so here we are. In here, had I been printing anything out, it would be a list in here. We could actually cancel, pause. So whenever somebody decides to print something, for instance, if I go here and I come and I hit print, it should, in essence, get stuck in that queue. Give it a minute. Maybe the printer's asleep and it doesn't see it. All right, boom. Now it's it went. Ah, come back. And there he is. So there goes the print job. It tells you how many pages and how big. You can actually, when there is a plethora of, of them in there, you'll see sometimes that it gets stuck. You can decide to restart and or 
cancel all of the actual print jobs. And now after, since there was too many, and maybe the people, it got stuck at one point and they don't need it anymore because they printed somewhere else. So you want to make sure you cancel everything and now you can restart the printer and the print job is ready to go. Any questions? Except for the printer being a pain in the ass and not showing up on my... Here we go. Maybe I don't... You're going to get us demonetized. Sooner or later, bro. But we're going to get... We're going to go out to jail. One or two. All right. Questions, doubts. Hello. Anyone out there? Nothing. Thank you. Fadil wanted to know how you have your your network set up. He said, do you have a server on your system or are you using your computer as a server? No, I don't I don't have a server per se. I I have everybody has their own computer. I don't I don't use a server. Each each of household member has a gaming PC, sorry. You asked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so nobody wants to really, I don't, I don't have a centralized server. The only thing I do play with once in a while is virtual box. If I want to play with server and, and start messing around and doing stuff, but, uh, I usually don't, um, use my own computer as a server. It bogs me down. But everyone in your house can print to the same printer. Oh, well that, well that printer itself is a wireless printer. If you notice what was amazing about it, since it's so smart, it actually knows what HTTP port. It's actually sending it to an HTTP address instead of, uh, where do you go, where do you go, where do you go? Printer, printer. I closed that window, didn't I? I did, I did. See? Anybody know what this is here? Uh, IP Please. address. Please. Mac address. IP address, oh, yes. Oh, oh. IP address, yeah. So it actually knows an IP version six on my network, and it has a colon. And then what's that? What's that three nine eleven? What does that mean? That's port. like a port number. That is the port that is going to on that little website. Pretty cool. So I have a, a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even know if I know how to word this right. Uh, so. Like you said, your com your printer is wireless. So, uh, what is everybody has to connect to the Wi-Fi or download an app or something, right? No, nope. they just have to install the same printer on their computer. It's wirelessly there. If I wanted to control the print drops from one central location, then yes, they would connect to a central server. But in the house purposes, there's no reason for me to to have that centralized. Each Windows has its capabilities to spool print jobs. So, so in a in a corporate setting, um, why would somebody do a print server versus just doing this? I guess the other way is more okay. secure. Yeah, one is now, uh, as we stated, one of the processes is to be able to download the latest and greatest drivers. Two, uh, the, some users are completely locked out from being able to do that, right? So they will have that in the actual print server so now they can come in like this beautiful thing doesn't seem to want to do i don't see that name out on the network sooner or later it'll show up but just as you can see here this here xbox one that's not me that's that's the xbox one that's on the actual network i'm supposed to be able to see a printer like that out there as you can see that's my router it looks like out there and the other desktops are out there either which way this printer should be available did it just show up down there? No, that's just a picture of this. If I came and I went in here and, and I put the actual pipe, oh, that's what I could do. Never mind. Give me a second. What's the... That's the wrong button again, Diego. Is it this one? I never remember these names. I'm getting too old for me. Computer properties. Where's computer freaking properties? Anybody see computer properties? 
I see it is in the bottom right next to your Rotra box. It's just not coming in the front part of it. It's there. I already opened it. No, that's computer. That's, that's the device manager and stuff. That's not the one that I was wanting. I wanted the... You know what? This is why you're lazy, Diego. While you looking, also, Ayana, if you have a big corporation, you have several printers, uh, mm -hmm. maybe you don't want everybody printing to the same printer. So having it on a print server, you get you have selectivity to who can print there. You can identify where the print jobs are coming from. You have more control on top of yeah. the fact that, like uh, Diego saying, the, uh, the drivers and everything can be automatically uh, sent and everything in control. So so one is it controls that and two now if i want to go and print here it will be here and, and if it is 64 bit or 32 bit drivers only the approved drivers will be loaded to this server only the approved based on your house that you install whatever you want only the approved drivers will be installed on that print server now, if I want to connect, look, see, it says DC printer. Oh, by the way, I figured out my, my, my brain fart of why I couldn't find a printer. It's because you need to put the server name. In this case, the server name is my computer name. And then when I put the pipe for that, you could see now my resources on the network. One of the resources that I'm sharing is this. The other one is the user's drive. So if I come in here and I hit connect, now, the user doesn't have to really figure out what to do for the actual uh, print drivers itself. Let me go back to the other one. Where's the other one? Here. Closed it. Thank you once again, Diego. It's always a stupendous job. And supposedly, if he finished installing it, I should have it. Oh, it's not finished. Where is he? Connect. There you go. It's opening something. You guys saw it, right? But then it closes it. It doesn't want to. Yeah. Open. There goes the print spool, but it won't let me. Ah, it's because you said aplica. They didn't like that. Yeah, they didn't like that. It's, it's a hung gringo. This guy didn't like it. <laughs> doesn't like me talking to him in Spanish. Maybe who knows sooner or later. I'll I'll what I'll do later is uh maybe for tomorrow I'll look at my to now that I have it shared I'll go from my actual virtual computer and I'll install it from there. That should much be much easier than it getting confused on why I want to install the computer the printer twice. All right, questions or doubts on the printer queue. And what you can do in there so you can pause it you can cancel it you can go and you can, into the options of sharing it and look at the uh, the actual properties of it update the drivers as for the maintenance we need to understand that these things are what we get paid for one of the features is that we may have to go out there and do maintenance we are not expecting users to do maintenance to these things at the same time the big robust ones usually they pay maintenance for those but otherwise why are we doing it it obviously extends a life just like when you take a bath not to sweat down pellejo so therefore hopefully uh we can take that into consideration obviously follow the manufacturer's directions make sure whatever you're using is actually certified never use compressed air whatever type of tool be a certified type of vacuum to be able to do that Look at the printer maintenance kit that you're going to get. What is a printer maintenance, maintenance kit, Diego? Well, that's a good question, Diego. Thank you for asking. That's usually the little thing that you're going to be using to replace all of your worn parts. They actually set, sell you the actual maintenance kit. Because just like if uh, a lot of people say, if you got to go and change maybe one tire, you have got might as well go and change all four. So the, what they do is they s send you the whole kit, depending on what type of kit you get. You can get a whole kit for the fuser assembly and all necessary parts around there. And you can get the, the kit for just the rollers or you get to get the whole shebang, which will come with toners and all that stuff when it comes with the laser. It all depends on what type of kit you purchase. Questions, doubts? 
No. So, when problems arise, remember to document everything that's one on one. One, because the fact that it makes it much easier. So, if somebody else comes along, it's going to, if they're not going to start from step one. Uh, always, as always, less intrusive means start with the simple solutions first. In this case, verify the printer is connected to the computer, the network, or turned on. ID 10 T ID 10 T that's all I could tell you. You'd be surprised how many times I've tried to remotely fix a printer. I dispatch, uh, this, the actual dispatch tech out there when I first started and the printer wasn't on, even though I asked, but it wasn't on. Another thing is uh, some of these uh, softwares, since uh, drivers is a software, so since the OS gets updated, they do these little stupid, um, so, sorry, these beautiful things called security patches that they give, which obviously means that they gave you a product that was useless at first, so they created patches to be able to fix it. Play with me in this. The moment that you get these little things, usually these patches, I think I saw it once where somebody was frustrated because the code was broken. And they would, they couldn't fix it. So then when they go and they fix it, and then the guy comes by and he looks at it and he goes, well, it's giving this error. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's no longer uh, uh, completely shutting down. Now it's giving another error. So at least there's, there's some progress. Overall, we have to remember whatever they fix may actually break something else, in, including actually not allowing you to print with your print driver. So the OS gave you a patch. And now, God only forbids, now so does the actual print drivers. They got to go and send out the latest and greatest so that it works with the OS. Any questions, doubts? As we could always just smile and wave as for whenever this happens. We just need to be able to identify those things. Is that way we get paid for the buku bucks? Because most of the times, uh, especially the servers, there's no way that it's going to go and update itself. So you have to make sure you maintain it. You have to add all the drivers. So you just updated a driver for your operating system on the actual server. This means you need to go add the Windows XP. If there's still computers out there on the floor, uh, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 8, whatever your enterprise is using, you need to load it onto that print server. Next, problems with the actual... Ah, except for hitting buttons that you shouldn't be doing with the actual printer. Verify, as we always say, that the printer is on. Try printing a test page. This one frustrates a lot of people because of the fact that they don't want to go and do this for you. Thank God we have remote support. But can somebody explain to me why should I print a test page? I'm a user. I'm frustrated. I need you to explain to me. I just tried to print something from Word. I just tried to print something from Explorer. Why do you want me to do a test print test page? Or do you not know what a print test page is? Make sure it prints. Correct. But do you know where you would go to do a print test page? Was it the 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 spool, a print spool. Uh, yeah, yeah you're close. The <laughs> printer properties. And here's the button. Now, what's the difference from me printing here or printing from here? To check if your app is it's working. Coming, it's coming from the printer itself. The printer. And not from what? a program. In reference to that, you need to understand that when you're going through the actual application, it must go through the shell of the OS, which then gets to the kernel. You're skipping a step here in this case, and you're going directly and testing the actual drivers. So there's no if, ands, or buts. If this thing is configured correctly, there is no security issues of you printing to it per se, where the application maybe 
uh, the applications broken because it needed to have that LPT1 port turned on, as I told you. So I clicked this one and this one so that the application, when it prints to LPT1, it's going to print to both. So that the application gets tricked, right? On top of it, if if we don't come over here directly and print, it won't. You won't be able to test if it is the actual OS that's the problem, or if it's the application that's giving you the problem. Questions, doubts. No. Right. Next. Area is this is in reference to the actual high end ones because obviously you're not going to be doing this with your actual uh, ones at home, but unless if you got that type of money to throw into it, out of memory error. Be careful with this one. This could, believe it or not, sometimes be drivers that are incorrect and it'll say on the screen out of memory because the language and the way it, it was spit it to it, it just didn't understand it, or it'll spin uh, out a whole bunch of garbage. It looks like like, I don't know, obviously not any language. It just has a whole bunch of letters and characters everywhere. And lastly, it could be that what they're trying to print out be the amount it is that it's printing out and or the fonts and the stuff that, that they're working with could be uh, insufficient. So if it is a high-end laser printer and you need to be able to print this stuff up, that you could actually... Uh, uh, upgrade the memory on those higher ones, but usually that's not done on the cheap one. Questions, doubts. All right, network cop uh, actual connectivity problems. This obviously is verified. First of all, is it the default printer? Because maybe you you are connecting to several network printers. And you're pretty much ticking off right now the pilot's lounge because you decided to forget to uninstall the one that you were testing with earlier and no longer actually printing out in the help desk. Next, verify the actual IP address. Be careful because of the fact that some people seem to be very, very lazy when it comes to installing these things. So if it was replaced by a dispatch technician, it wasn't you, you're on the actual call center, ensure that whatever printer that is there, especially if you hear the keywords that it was replaced recently, that the printer's IP address is correct. Verify that it is online. So these things, not only that it has a network or, or either wireless or a actual cable, you need to be able to ping the IP address, do that through the actual command line and another thing believe it or not which i don't know I don't know it just frustrates me there's a beautiful beautiful green weird button in the front that says online and i don't know why they press that button it should say offline because that's what it does <laughs> Is a little green button on some of these laser buttons. And so you, you do that. Let's say if, if by mistake you printed a whole bunch of garbage and you didn't feel like it. So you can actually hit that and it puts it offline so you can actually then cancel all the print jobs. So you got to be careful. Uh, one, is it really online? Is it turned on? And two, did somebody go and press that thing and put it offline? This is not only on laser printers. There is an offline buttons on your impact printers too. Daisy wheel and or dot matrix doesn't matter. There's also one for your thermal. And I think even these little fancy ones, you could, I'm not sure if now they have that little button anymore, the offline on the, on the inkjet. I would have to go check. But I think you could put it offline in theory if I go and check the menus. This is a little more complicated most likely than before, but I'm pretty sure you could. Next. In reference to shared printers, obviously one of the thing is print a test page from your local computer itself, not from the program. Verify that you're correct to the default one again is selected, especially if you have several printers that you're going to. A remote computer can verify the access to the to the uh, 
to the computer which the printer is actually attached so if it is a server that you're attaching to make sure like i did since obviously i tried to look for it directly on the network it's not connected directly to the network it was actually a printer queue so i had to go directly to that server name or computer name to be able to get to the correct queue one of the things that we can do is delete the existing one just in case because of the fact that as everything in this case i can't just turn it off and on the server i could just delete the whole thing and reinstall it on the computer and see if it actually works verify obviously that you may have hard drive space because some people actually have problems since you are spooling the information onto the actual server if you're running out of the hard drive space voila, you're gonna have problems because it has to create a temporary file of the actual document before it sends it over the network you could actually there is options to print direct which will help you out because some of the servers are getting hit by so many users that the actual printer spool goes too high fair warning back to step one that we said earlier you're going to run out of ram if that actual laser printer that you're going and sending all these jobs directly to actually doesn't have sufficient for that print server to take questions doubts next one when in reference to printing from windows or applications delete as i stated several times uh, from the print jobs in the queue that usually helps especially when he's stuck and doesn't know what to do <laughs> just delete it all out and hopefully uh restart it afterwards obviously always stop the actual queue make sure it doesn't try to print anything while you're trying to delete because that's only going to confuse the living daylights out of your computer and or server because of the fact that while it goes deleting since you only deleted one at a time and or you put it you didn't put it on pause it's going to keep on trying to print the next one and then it's going to try to delete so it's, you always want to stop it before you try to deal with it always put the printer on pause that would be from the print queue itself don't go and pause it physically verify all the connections of the cables once again these users are using these things like if it was not theirs like little kids that don't care about it what do i mean by that when they're taking out the paper in and out and they're do using these devices and or changing the toner cartridges they pull these things i i don't know why but they seem to release the cable so if it is and it has an actual for instance, on those big high-end impact printers that I'm talking about, the, the dot matrix impact printers, a lot of the times you have to buy an external print server since it only has an LPT port, uh, I'm sorry, a Centronics port uh, in the back where you can connect to the LPT port. So therefore, you've got to mimic like if this printer is connecting to an LPT1 port to get it onto the network with this network print server it's a actual little box gray box that uh allows you to be able to utilize here he is so this little box will then allow you to connect in the back seat with the printer and then it will allow you to go to the network the printer has no idea because you're still tra talking in the same language that is expecting instead of the ethernet it's still speaking to it in the same local lpt1 port as is expected another thing that we could do uh, uh, which helps out a lot is start and stop the actual service what do they mean by that there is an actual services in your actual uh what do you go can you guys still see my desktop? Yes, and the sir. services. Yes, sir. All right, good. So let's go here and we go and look for print spooler or is it spooler? Yeah, oh, print spooler. There he is. I can actually stop it. What's going to happen is now that service is not available. If I go to my computer and look for printers and try to use them, they're all offline. You see? All of them. Forget about that guy because that's on the network. That's nothing to do with me. But the ones that have to do with me are completely gone. And if I try to print to there, the spooler won't. It's just not going to accept it. 
now that everything stopped, because maybe the operate, even if I restarted, believe it or not, a lot of these servers, you go and, and uh, restart the computer. Since it had everything stuck in there and it seems to be stuck completely, the only solution you have, because Windows is just so beautiful and they want to entertain you, they have hidden the button over here. God only knows it would have been so easy if they just would have added the little button that says stop and start the spooler on the other screen. But obviously, since there is so many things that they call services in Windows, why not put it all in one place? Hence, the screen where we are now. In here now, I can go and restart the stuff. This will happen with anything that you want, any service that it has with. You can actually say that only specific people can use a specific service. In this case, we're talking about print spooling. You can start it when it when it first uh, starts. You can manually, you can disable it completely so it doesn't come up. Now that I want to start printing again. Another thing is when, oh, let me stop it actually. If I stop the service, another thing that happens is, where'd you go? Uh, is that name still here? Yeah. If I try to print, see, I can't. Not there anymore. Because why? The print spooler is turned off. Now I go and turn it back on. Hit OK. And double click. in another screen somewhere god only knows where i put it but you get the point would restarting the service rather than stopping it um like make a difference because pausing pausing the the actual uh there you go it just it was a while to come up pausing it through here all you did was just pause the actual spooler itself the service just like a web server hosts a website so that you could see it a a this service this spooling service that's what he does he's uh basically rendering your print jobs and keeping it inside windows until he actually sends it out to the printer this is to alleviate the problem as we mentioned before you could actually uh, 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 where the actual printer is having problems and because it doesn't have sufficient memory so if you actually have it all spooled on the server instead of directly over there, it will ob obviously do that. They will worry, you see. These things never, here we are. Keep documents. I can actually keep it. I can print spool documents first. I can uh, uh, print after the last one has been spooled. I can change priorities of this printer. I could choose when somebody can actually print at what time. All from the print server, obviously. You can pretend that if this was a server in a corporate America, I could always just depend on what I want in from here. I could actually add the drivers. Questions? Doubts? No. As for security, you could actually choose what groups can actually see this. Once again, in corporate America, most likely you'll be seeing the whole domain. So let's pretend just for giggles that I'm actually in Hotmail and I work for Hotmail. So the whole Hotmail domain, if I wanted to, or if there was a region, if there was America's Hotmail domain, then it, maybe I would just put the actual America's region. Or maybe I only want it for accounting. So then I would actually just add the accounting group. In this case, I have the everyone group, which everyone in their associates should be able to print as long as they are on this land. Question? Doubt? No. Thank you. All right. So next is, uh, as we said, I think we mentioned this one, which is a delete printer. Update your actual drivers. Make sure you're up to date. As we said, that might be a problem with your OS being able to talk to the old driver. Try to print to an actual file. That will actually let you know if your spooler is the issue or not. That's the reason why they're asking you. Just to make sure, is it the actual uh, print spooler, which is the actual service that does this? Or is it the actual printer or, the, or something else that's causing it? As we stated before, verify. And lastly, print from safe mode. 
be fair warning if you go into safe mode sometimes that's not going to work especially if it is a network printer and you don't select with networking and a lot of the times in your safe mode if you don't uh load it correctly with that networking then obviously you're not going to be able to test out the printer because you can't get on the network Next area here is the actual garbled characters on a paper. Cancel all print jobs. I actually verify uh, that you're not uh, have the incorrect actual drivers. Make sure that the uh, application not causing this issue. It may be that the application you that, that you're using is using the wrong drivers. Some of these actual uh, applications be from an AS400 and or an application that is proprietary has its own built-in drivers and it's expecting it an actual type of printer that is coming out so uh, be very careful on what they're using is the actual USB uh, cable uh, secure believe it or not I've seen that I thought it was very weird when they told me that although if if the cable you would expect that if it was connected that it would work but sometimes if the cable is a little bit kind of loose and not connected correctly once again maybe the zeros and ones are going through the wrong little channel right it's and each one is for send or receive and stuff so it will create that actual issue a lot of the ones like just before if you just turn it off and turn it back on again it most likely will fix more more or less 99 percent of these small issues that these printers are have because of the fact that the user does not turn it off so just like anything if you don't turn it off you leave it on for so much time it just starts running out of memory your router at home maybe causes that problem i'm not sure you people have dsl routers and or cable routers they just run out of memory and or stuff so you just need a refresh you just turn it off turn it back on and voila problem that you had is gone especially the ones that have too many people visiting uh, uh you'll see that maybe some of these small offices if when you start off supporting small offices for these mom and pops they have a soho router so you could just imagine the pounding that these little cheap routers taking for those different users it's not supposed to be doing that so much it's got counters it's got logs it's got a whole bunch of plethora of things even real routers sometimes regular routers cisco routers one of the simple things is when you're having a lot of problems with it is just to turn it off and turn it back on again as for the printing the wrong colors uh <clears throat> believe it or not that it, it, can anybody understand what they mean by try flipping the paper around like photo paper is glossy on one side and exactly yeah so you got to be very careful on what type of paper these people are feeding so it may be just designed only to be printed on one side so you could just get it just imagine uh that gets very frustrating if you think it's not frustrating imagine when they have oh i forgot what it's called but for lack of a better name the seal of the company on the paper printed that means you got to load it not only you know you know the right side you know flip it over but now you also have to know which way is it am i supposed to have the seal over here or am i have that and god only knows the users mess that all up and they waste up things so you have to try to make sure you simplify it some users sometimes you have to put a little label and make it as simple as that so that they know exactly how to load that paper in there one not only for the user, but it helps the other technicians that are going to come because they're going to be just as frustrated as you were when you first had to figure it out <laughs> for yourself. Any questions? Alex? I wouldn't say more of like the, the printing quality, but what about when it prints and the paper ends up being printed with like a, like folds on the edges? Good question. So would the ink cartridge create a fold on an edge? Just thinking out loud. Does the ink cartridge ever touch the, the paper? The cartridge is the one that's up here in the air on the tray for the ink. Then you have the, the, the actual thing. So what would create, because you're, you're talking about either laser 
and or uh, ink cartridge because the other one is on an actual carriage and, and the carriage itself would create maybe uh, the wrinkle. So can anybody help me out? On a laser printer, what could there's two things that can create a wrinkle on a paper. Besides a user, please, please. Let's not go for ID 10 I think the rollers might be. Oh, yes, the rollers, uh, either the pickup rollers and or the ones that are in the back when it comes out, those things can be getting bad and there may be something jammed in there. Uh, another thing that I've seen a lot is that they actually just jam too much paper in there. So the pickup rollers is not the issue. It's actually just too much paper in there. So then it's, it's actually getting wrinkled. Uh, in the rear, the same thing of the, where the paper comes out when it, when it uh, finishes printing. In there, too, those rollers that are there, they can create that problem. There could be little pieces of paper, paper clip, staples. You will always remember me when you for the first time you ever find inside the printer a paper clip or a staple. Because it's going to happen. If you find a cookie, just eat it and just walk away. Don't eat it, all right? Because that's all I need is you guys getting poisoned listening to the professor. He said I can eat. Questions? Doubts? Does, Nobody? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then does that, are the rollers also what, uh, I guess, go bad or cause the, um, like when you're printing something and it has like a, a loud uh, jamming noise, like it's, something's jammed. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it too well. If it's making, with what type of printers I can understand? Whatever, what the noise? Is there a laser, a impact, thermal? Uh, it definitely isn't a thermal. I don't think it's a laser. Um, I'm just like thinking of like what used to happen to me at work uh, like two years ago. Um, Do you remember if it was an impact printer? I think it was. Because impact printers make a humongous noise, no matter what you want to do with them. They even come with a special, some of them come with a special sound case. Here it is a sound case that he, that you can actually put, put the darn thing into because it's so loud. Some people would say, oh, it's the, the drum, but I would, really wouldn't know what that was. So. Well, the drum would be the laser printer. Okay, so then it was a drum isn't a laser. Yeah, and if it's making that noise now, what they're talking is the cartridge itself. So somebody went again and put a paper clip in there somewhere, a piece of metal or something, and it got inside the actual cartridge and it's going and it's making that rattling noise. I've been there. I've heard it. I didn't do it, but I've seen it. <laughs> dun dun dun. Farmers, we cover everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Any other question? That was a good question. It's gonna happen, guys. Those those are the things that will happen. Would you rather spend time fixing that issue or just replacing that printer? That it all depends. If I have a service contract on the printer, which a lot of the Fortune 500s do, I, it's as simple as me going to the website, filling out the form for a SOX, and it, they, they'll just basically uh, send me another refurbished printer, and I send them the bro broken one. So it's, it's not worth you going in there and fixing that nine out of ten times in, the, in these companies they don't want you to do anything except for replace usually the user is replacing the, the actual cartridge which contains the actual drum and all that stuff you would be replacing the actual pickup rollers and or fuser assembly on a laser printer for instance the ribbon that's a user usually and if on a uh which is that would be an impact printer, which is the ribbon. If they need to replace the actual uh, carriage, it has these little rubber, uh, little uh, thing where the, it actually pulls the paper that has little rubber nipples on it. So you have to they'll, they'll actually sell you that thing so you can take it off and put in one, new ones. Once again, these things, these Epson printers and or impact printers, they're not meant to throw away. You, you, they're meant to last for pretty much forever. And you just replace all the parts that, that, as a technician, that wear and tear that are there. Unless if it is a, a, the motor, 
the, the actual board or something like that, but there is normal wear and tear that you will be replacing. And once again, since it is a very expensive, we're talking about thousands of dollars printers, these high-end impact printers, they have a service contract and they'll just send you a refurbished printer, you send them the broken. Questions? I have a question here. Uh, so, when there is a problem with the drum in the laser printer, uh, I thought it's necessary to replace only the cartridge. Or... In, in mo nine out of 10 times on the ones that are the cheaper models, the drum is all inclusive with the actual toner cartridge and everything else. So it's, it's it, with the toner and the actual drum, and I forgot what was the other part. So it was that big one that we saw. As, uh, so it, it does obviously cost more than the ones that actually can sell you just the parts. So if you run out of toner, but there's nothing wrong with the drum, I could just buy more toner. So these higher end printers have the capability of allowing you to be able to obviously uh, just continue to add more toner into the toner cartridge area instead of replacing the whole thing. So whenever uh, the actual drum or any other part goes bad, you could actually replace that part. Once again, these high-end printers, then you can best bet it's going to cost much more than if you would have just bought the 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 other one because that's a cheaper model and it's just all inclusive as one i say cheaper but i don't remember how much the toner cartridge cost back in the day toner cartridges weren't cheap questions doubts yeah they're not that not that cheap this is for the high-end ones so you know 800 bucks uh the lower ones 84 bucks, 139, that's a decent price. These laser cartridges are usually not cheap, especially for the high-end printers. They're, they're meant to last for, for the amount of pages, thousands of pages that they're meant to print out. Now, for a laser printer and, and actual ink uh, jet printers, you can actually calibrate. Some of these uh, printers are actually small or smarter ones. Those, a smart enough ones, especially the ones that are like almost all inclusive. What I mean about the all in one ones. So in, you could you probably see in your house, you have the scanning, you have an inkjet, not a laser printer, right? And it's got faxing capabilities. So nowadays, instead of uh, as before, what it's gonna do, it'll it's always did this. It always prints out that when you uh, change the cartridge, it'll print out this weird test page. Back in the days, you, you used to need to, with your naked eyes, and me that I am obviously blind as a bat from close, you had to decide and calibrate and choose in, in the software and calibrate the actual printer so that the printer head could see what was the best quality. They give you a whole bunch of lines to choose from. Now, it actually prints this out, and now what you do is you just put it in the scanner portion of the printer, and now it goes and scans it, and now the computer decides what was the best quality, and it calibrates the printer. Pretty quick, pretty uh, nice and sweet. As for the laser printers, the same thing, try to calibrate it. You can have, free, uh, I believe it's in the menus to try to calibrate it, and it will try to calibrate itself. Same thing, it will print out, I believe, um, if I remember correctly, HP prints out the little bar. It looks like barcodes, and it asks you which one's the best one. Hard to explain, but when you print it out, a calibration page it explains it very very easily it just tells you which one looks the best and that you have like a through g to, to pick questions doubts um is the calibration done through the computer or uh, um depending I on mean, the printer I... itself yeah depending on the printer type okay. itself you could you, uh there might be a software that you can install on the printer some of them you could actually go to the printer if it's on the network and go directly to the actual print server itself on the printer on these HP print printers and do it through there. Uh, but most of them have an actual software that come with it to calibrate it. Or you could, I think, if I remember correctly, when I was doing it by hand, I don't know if they still do that, the HPs, after you print it, you go in there and you select the letter that corresponds to what they printed it out. I'm not sure if they still do that, 
because I am an old fool guy. We used to have to do everything manual. All you people have all these fancy GUI things now. GUI is a graphical user interface, just in case I use all these things, which means a fancy thing of saying right here. See that right there? That's a GUI. What are you looking at right now? Which is something that you can look at and represent something. Next, poor print quality itself on laser printers. This can be caused by the dri the actual drivers of themselves, the application itself. The, you could obviously check and see what are the settings of it to see if the actual uh, print quality was set to a very low uh, setting, which obviously will cause that thing. Another thing which I always love is when you start playing bingo with it. I call it bingo because I don't know if you ever had Spanish bingos now with the little thing. It's like a little bag and you shake the bag and you take out the little bingos thing. So therefore, what you're doing is you're taking out the actual cartridge. Be careful. I just said, just taking out the cartridge. What's inside this cartridge? The actual drum. What is the drum? Photosensitive. Means make sure you're doing this in a dark area and or make sure that you, you're, you keep it pointing down. Just like you can't get burned, a sunburn on your stomach if you're laying on your back. Same theory. Keep the green thing down so it doesn't see have direct light i know a lot of you'll see a lot of technicians they like to play around with it i don't like playing with it because if you mess with it and, and and you leave it exposed for too too long it, i've seen it it creates a line because of the fact that you're putting it the light directly to that green area so now that you back to where we were going you shake it act like if you're making yourself that little sports shake with a little powder drink and just shake it. This will loosen up the toner that's in there because sometimes some of this toner gets hard as a rock, just like your salt does, uh, and or sugar. In that case, you need to make sure you break the, up that toner, make sure you got it good and, and handy. Same thing before you actually install a brand new toner cartridge, make sure you do that little game. Just like you do with your shaving cream. If you're buying the shaving cream and you're not buying the other ones, I don't know what the other one's called, but I always find it. That one's always mystery cream because it's a little blue thing that grows besides the way back to here you need to make sure you shake your guy questions doubts nope now as for replacing the drum if you start seeing a ghost of something there so i'm printing but then something in the background is still there that is a key thing that there's something wrong with the drum because it's still keeping or the cleaner. And since these are all inclusive little beautiful things, the cheaper ones, you just got to need to replace the cartridge. But for the need of the test, you need to know that it's the cleaner that's not working. The cleaner is a little blade at the end that cleans and takes away the actual particles charges from the drum. Blank pages, most likely out of toner. Try also, for some weird reason, especially if they told you it is a brand new toner. They say, no, it was working fine until I put this one. Now it's completely white. I'd rather have it that it's, it was a soft. Can anybody tell me what they did, did wrong? It was gray. It wasn't strong with the old one. They just put a brand new toner in there, and now it's completely white. Forgot to remove the sticker? Yes. Well, yeah. Well, nice. I'll take sticker. I'll take sticker, yeah. There's that little tape that's in there that looks like if it was meant for, for the old days. If anybody ever used to catch uh, mochas, which is, uh, not, is it mosquitoes? No. Flies. Like you see in those old restaurants where they, like, it looks like a little tape. That's what it looks like. You pull that tape out and, again, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, release it. Because that tape is sealing the toner in the original little cartridge thingy, Mabob. Therefore, without pulling that out, you're going to get a completely blank page. Another thing that you could do is, unfortunately, check if there's power going to the power supply. That's internal, and you usually won't be doing that. But on some of these sophisticated ones, it could be as simple as 
maybe a plug in the back was disconnected. Prints out dirty, 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 dirty. So what is happening here is, or sometimes they'll print beautifully, and as soon as you pick it up, it starts falling. Not the paper, but the actual ink. What happened is that the diffuser assembly itself, as we stated, is going to burn your fingers. Therefore, if it didn't get to that temperature or is unable to get to that temperature, it's unable to then be able to uh, adhere to the paper. Another thing is make sure you check the grade of the paper. If some of these people buy the wrong type of paper that's not meant for this type of laser printer because maybe they can't take that thick paper. Ghosting, as I said earlier, is the imaging where it's not fully discharged. Some of the things that you could do, because it, it, it could be also a power, uh, power problem, you could let it cool down and see if, if it uh, will fix it. But obviously, this is already a problem with the drum itself that's getting uh, creating the problems. And a lot of the times, you just change the cartridge. As we said, it's all in one, so it makes it much easier. If you're having white lines, not black lines, white lines, that could be the fact, again, that it, it is not coming out. So it could be that it's stuck somewhere in there. You want to shake it out. If you have a dark line, that's different, but a blotchy print. So that, again, these are things that happens to this thing. You're going to be telling me, like I said, I didn't I say it earlier, it feels like if I'm playing bingo with this, you're going to take out the <laughs> toner cartridge and you're going to shake it and take out another little bolita from the bag so that you could be able to hopefully fix it. At the same time, you'll be able to go in again, facing the green drum down. You could pull the little protective lid that's there and then roll it. And if necessary, look towards it to see if there's a foreign debris in there to try to take it out. Next is incomplete characters of themselves. Just uh, check uh, the actual printer settings themselves and the density. Crease pages, restart the printer or try it an another paper type. It could be uh, obviously the pickup rollers themselves that is causing the, especially if you see it in the middle, because usually these pickup roller. The one that is in the front that it, for these laser printers, they have it right in the in the middle. Uh, the other ones that are, I believe there's two that go uh, on the other side, but that's a total of three. Depending, some of them are more compact and they have two. Instead of being in the center, they'll have on each edge. As for pa paper jams, another thing that could be uh, an issue there, you need to obviously turn it off. A lot of the times, do not mess with these printers especially the big ones, the all-inclusive laser ones, those things you don't want to be messing with, around with them unless, unless they tell you exactly where to go. You say, but Diego, what is it going to do? Talk to me? No, this thing has a little beautiful little screen there with a graphical user interface again that's going to tell you open door two. And then you look at it and it's got door one, door two, door three, door... Simple as that, door two, okay, I pulled. Next step, because now it has like a little thing like your refrigerator. If you notice that you actually did what it asked you, it's gonna tell you the next step. Pull here, paper is here. Obviously, and sometimes the, uh, the manufacturers, if it is and it has actual service and you can't get to the thing, then you get a professional service guy to take out the paper that's stuck in there. Uh, another thing that we could have problems with pulling multiple sheets, obviously humidity or too much paper. You'll be surprised or the pickup roller. But one of the common ones that these things, especially in these uh, office environments where they're in warehouse, dealing with warehouses, they're printing a lot of stuff. This person is getting tired because the printers are what they call the printer room or a printer area. So now instead of being on my desk, I got to go all the way over there. So now, not only did I go over there, everybody else is using it. So now I got here and it's running out of paper. So what am I going to do? I'm going to stuff it as much as it can that it looks like you on Christmas dinner. And it just can't fit any more paper. Therefore, it will pull 
multiple sheets because it's just when it's picking and it's so tight that the two of them just come together. Just like all the hundies that Marvy has in, inside his wallet that unfortunately sometimes the waiter, the last time he took us out, he was surprised because he just had so many hundreds that were stuck together. Right, Marvin? I have twins, Diego. <laughs> oh, that was a napkin? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> ha- or handkerchief. <laughs> All right. Next area for Inkjet M- Impact Printer, the poor quality itself for them. Check always check the paper type sometimes these things they go and buy the wrong one luckily in the fortune 500 they usually don't play that game so accounting and and procurement is taking care of that who is procurement well usually nowadays procurement is a separate part of accounting and they are encompassed with it and or any other department it is a section of that department which coincides with accounting and facilitates all the purchases of everything that is in the corporate world, which then standardizes the paper, standardizes the type of ink cartridges or laser cartridges that you can purchase. In reference to the actual paper type, you'll be surprised how many people buy either cheap or they go and buy too thick or they buy the wrong type of paper. As we said earlier, some of these things are not meant to be used here then maybe it's meant to be used on a laser laser or maybe is meant to be used on a specialized printer therefore if you buy the wrong type it will not print on right and in front in reference to the uh, poor ones for the actual impact check the ribbon you'll be surprised how lazy these people are and or sometimes you are responsible for the maintenance so you need to be passing by if you are the dispatch tech and making sure that it doesn't look like the old typewriter and that it has that line worn down in the middle from the impact printer uh, wearing out the actual ribbon. Questions, doubts so far. As for the spacing, now that one is tricky. The spacing on the print head might need adjustment. What they're talking about is, as we stated before, these printers actually print out in multi-part forms. Therefore, Menganito came by and he decided that he wanted to put a five-part form. Hence, he had to pull, there's a little lever, pull back a little bit the print head or adjust the print heads so that now the paper can fit between the ribbon, the, the, the roller, and the actual printed and all that can actually fit. Now, Pepe doesn't know that Menganito did that, didn't notice or just completely forgot, and he only put a two part form. And now it's very, very light, poor quality. You come and then the print ribbon looks brand new. Well, how can that be? Well, Menganito went and touched it and didn't put it back in its place. Hence, why some of these big, sophisticated printers, who, as I said before, these dot matrices, those big ones, big ones, you can program it so it knows. It knows exactly, and it will go, and it'll pick. You tell it, okay, the, it's the shipping form. It's going to be now the packing slip form. It's going to be this form. And now it has programmed all the different types of form that you store. All these printers can store the different memories of forms and it adjusts itself it then also knows if if it's an a4 if it's letter all of it is it, it actually is stored in the actual gui interface or the actual uh in onboard computer that the printer has questions doubts Woo-hoo. number I guess we can put this guy up. What can this be? Besides Hebrew. Oh, no. Is it Hebrew? I don't know what language that is. What can that be? I think can it's somebody... What, what, what's wrong with this, this uh, printout? What do you see obvious that shouldn't be there? Forget about the characters. What is obvious? There's obviously something there. 
that shouldn't be there. And what's that? Maybe the general. No, no, but on the piece of paper, on this image, on this picture, what do you see wrong? The, the black line. Much the line. Line. Second black streaks. Right. The line. Yeah. yeah, okay. I just want to make sure we spot this here. So this right here. So what can create this image on a paper? I am voting for dirty rollers. Oh, dirty mm -hmm. rollers. Oh, dirty rollers. Okay. Let's see. Where is he? Now, as you saw, it's not going completely across, and it's right in the middle. As we saw, some people might have cheated already and figured out real quick what that one was. Let's see this one. I'll pick a different one. What's wrong with this one here? This one doesn't seem to be a repetitive pattern, does it? It's a little bit different. Smudging. Debris okay. on the transfer corona. The fuser. Mm, fuser. What was one of them? Let's let's try. Let's try. Fuser. Want to try fuser? Transfer corona? Charging corona? What was it that we said? Pardon? Do the fuser. Transfer the corona. Fuser. The breeze on the transfer corona and fuser. So I got two votes for fuser. Let's go. Let's try fuser. Now, what happened here is here, you'll notice when it printed out, and this is a very bad example, but most likely when the user touched it, it is smearing. What's happened actually is smearing. The ink is smearing around. Well, a fuser could be creating this box. Next one. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, this one's my favorite. This is definitely not anybody's language. What could have caused Printer this? Printer driver. All right, let's go see. Right. As we said, the driver is his dictionary of or his Google translator of how to be able to talk to this printer. Everything talks in zeros and ones. Therefore, if you're a printer driver, because nobody got anything better to do than to create just one printer driver that would have worked with everything, like the LaserJet 4 printer driver used to do. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. But either which way, as for that, that is the one that explains it. So whenever you're using the incorrect one, you'll see that mumbo jumbo that it looks like if it's actually printing out the paragraph correctly, but it's all bad characters. Next one here, let's see. All right. So, and this one, it looks like it was printing, printing, and then it starts getting lighter, and then it starts getting dark again. Worn out printer Let's ribbon. See. Worn out printer ribbon. Good job. Next one. Ghosting, I think. Yeah, ghosting. Correct. You can see there the little image where it's there at the same time. Next one. Let's see. What in the world? Oh, okay. There he goes. There goes the white, beautiful lines. It looks like one of those old black and white movies. The lines coming down. What could that be? Debris. Debris. Yeah, on the transfer. Debris on the transfer. Corona. Yeah, that's that famous paper clip, and or God only knows what in there. Don't ask me what I've seen. Hey, I wouldn't put it past anyone. 
apparently that's where we eat nowadays. Uh, what can this be? That's a big mess. Looks like everything's jammed. Paper jam, man. Owner empty. <laughs> hey, next one. Let's see this one. Ooh, that's beautiful. Almost completely black. Charging crime. Right? That is correct. They're charging Corona. It's gone bad, so it's just not doing the right thing there. Here we are, a blank piece of paper. All right, I got this one. I think that one's toner empty. Woo! Let's try. Oh, our genius. That was tough, Kev. Hey, I, I didn't say I was a genius. Somebody else said it, so. <laughs> oh, for Kevin. <laughs> Um, thanks. So hopefully now we, we should be able to identify why printers are essential companion to many of our computers and be able to know overall how to install and support printers. Uh, obviously, with the hope, help of your colleagues in Motility Factory 500, when it comes to printers, they are able to help you out and uh, facilitate the process is based on the actual server and tell you what is necessary. And we should be able to compare and contrast all these different types that we just spoke about, name the four major types that there's out there and ways of actually installing within Windows and hopefully identify some of the common pitfalls when in installing it or common problems that may come up. Any questions or doubts? So what are the one, one of the four major categories of printer? Thermal, inkjet, laser, impact. Yeah, impact. Impact always gets people because they forget that there's two of them. So when they tell you Daisy will uh, and or dot matrix, just be uh, understanding that that means it is still the same thing they're both impact printers the only thing is that the daisy wheel has the daisy wheel with all the characters on it and it hits the paper by impacting the paper versus the other one has just little dots that it creates to create the letters and or characters questions doubts all right so she wrote for me i guess we can stop the recording if there's no questions